Ladies and gents, welcome back to Punk Politics. It's time for an alternative paper review. First up to the sun, which says all is forgiven. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Sarah Ferguson, who was ostracized from the royal family for, I think it was having her toes sucked, wasn't it? Has seemingly been welcomed back into the fold to join the royal family for the Christmas service. I mean, it's always nice to see the royals on their way into that church on Christmas Day, isn't it? You know, and the wider family too, all of their sort of nieces, nephews, cousins. I mean, you know, apart from the ones they had drugged out, committed and buried namelessly. I mean, it is sort of reassuring though, isn't it? This time of year where, you know, we stuff ourselves full of turkey, we have one too many sherries and then you have a big family row. It is kind of reassuring to see that there is a way back sometimes. I mean, you know, not for Fergie with the, the toe sucking thing. I was talking about Prince Andrew because yes, Prince Andrew was welcomed to the church service too. It's all right, Andy. It's all right. Don't we? It, what's in the past is in the past. We've all said some things. Prince Andrew's a nonce burger. I mean, honestly. This, this family, it's so weird, isn't it? Like Harry and Meghan can do little more than hold up their hands and say, actually, we think some of this stuff here might be a little bit racist and they're ostracized. Wait, where are they? Are they coming into the Christmas church service? Doesn't look like it. The Queen's cousins who were born with learning difficulties, they were nowhere to be seen either. Propelled from the palaces to die alone in a mental hospital somewhere. I mean, if only they had done something less offensive to Buckingham Palace's PR teams, like fornicated with trafficked minors, then presumably they'd have been welcomed straight in. Just as a side note, how much royal coverage have you seen in the last few days? It is so bizarre to me, this hold that the royal family have over the British press. Like I understand why it works for the royal family. It's in their interest to have positive gumph put out on every other newspaper. Like, look at Kate, she's wearing this lovely red top. And look at Prince George over here. Oh, he's helping out at a food bank. Did you see King Charles's speech? Oh, it, it, it just really hit the right note. Like I absolutely see why it works for Buckingham Palace, but what I don't understand is why Sky News, the BBC, the Times, the Telegraph, even the Guardian. Like, why are they running this stuff? Is this, <laughs> is this your scoop? Like imagine how depressed and downbeat you'd get if you actually genuinely had something resembling a scoop and you took it to the editor and you're like, oh my God, right, they're gonna release the names of the Epstein guests from the flight and the logs. And I have a source that says that it's gonna be this guy that's named and I've managed to get an exclusive interview. And then imagine your editor just stops you mid-flow like, yeah, that sounds great, Mark, but um, no, we're running with Kate's jumper. You're running, you're running with what? Yeah, it's a hell of a story. Also in the news today, the suggestion that interest rates are going to have to come down to help hard up families in the first quarter of this coming year. Now, I don't even need to go off on a rant about this. I did this last week. Like if we're accepting that interest rates need to come down to help hard up families through the cost of living crisis, then we are tacitly accepting that mortgage interest rates rising did nothing to curb inflation as part of the cost of living crisis, which means when they hike those interest rates 13 or was it 14 times to battle inflation, we are now accepting economically, fiscally, politically that none of that had any effect and now you're just paying double every month for absolutely no reason. But here's the fun part, because even if they do lower interest rates and you're on a tracker mortgage and you start to have a little bit extra at the end of each month, rest assured food inflation is projected to go up and the energy price cap just went up. So that'll be increasing in like January, February too. Oh, and don't forget, even though Rishi Sunak keeps saying, oh, it's the biggest tax giveaway and changes to the tax system in many decades, we are still paying the highest amount of tax that the UK, that the general population has done since the Second World War. And I, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, hang on a second, that doesn't make sense because last week he said that he had successfully halved inflation and this was gonna put more money back into the pockets of everyday Britons. And I'm here to tell you that either he doesn't understand what inflation is or he's hoping you don't. Anyway, that's it from me for this one. Until next time, I'm out this Mother Hubbard. It's punk politics. All up in your grill. grill.